or say Jomo channels. Brutal killings seem to have no end in the world's history as the accounts of murders of different degrees feature prominently in the daily newscast across the globe. In Ghana, while such nefarious art would be considered un Ghanaian by some citizens, others hold the view that Ghana's status as one of the world's most peaceful destinations remains precarious, especially with the news of recent serial killings across the length and breadth of the country. Happening not too long ago, with a wide condemnation, has been the murder of Ahmed Hussein Swale, a 31-year-old man said to be an associate of the internationally recognized investigative journalist Anas Arimiyao Anas. Confirmed reports said he was shot twice in the chest and once around his neck while he was driving to visit his sick child with one of his two wives at Medina, Accra, Ghana. The spate of such news, along with the up-to-date reports on adaptions, does not only put the ordinary Ghanaian in a needless state of fear and panic. It also exposes the lapses in the state institutions in charge of security and justice. Over the years, many have expressed worry about the delay of justice in the country, one of the phenomena that pose a crisis of credibility for judicial practices and the administration of justice in the country. Evidently, Three years after his murder, in the mid of the night in his own residence, the case of the late Member of Parliament for the Achim Ebuakwa North constituency, the Honorable Joseph Buache Dankwaedu, is still pending justice. The story has not been different barely two years after the heartrending news of the lynching of Captain Maxwell Adams Mahama at Denture Obwase. Since that tragic development of 16th January 2019, sections of the Ghanaian public have taken a swipe at the Member of Parliament for the Asin Central constituency in the Central Region, the Honorable Kennedy Ohini Ejapon, for reportedly putting the life of Ahmed on the line. Not too long before his death, a beef had kicked off between the said Member of Parliament and the organization Swale worked for, the Tiger IPI, under the leadership of Anas Arimiyao Anas. The grumbling had come up following the release of the famous number 12 expose of Anas, which revealed the rot in the football body of the country, the Ghana Football Association, GFA. According to the Member of Parliament, the modus soprandi of Anas and his Tiger IPI reviewed him highly corrupt. It was during the encounter the Member of Parliament was reported to have heard pictures of Anas and the deceased Ahmed Swali on his net two television channel. Beat him up when you see him around our premises, I will pay for whatever damages. The MP incited his employees in a local dialect. Why are you very dangerous? What you mean by that? We share many a more powerful partners. On buy your premises, I be a mistake. Me, 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 no. We are better be a mistake. We go a bad. So I'm mad, no. We show our more pictures, no, no, no. We have the picture in front of us. We are more so what you mean by that? Yes. I mean, boy, no. I'm mad, no. We, we, a friend, I'm mad. The picture back, we are more fun to see than yes. God, God. The picture back, what you mean by that? So as you can see, rolling on the screen. This is a boy. Or a bad boy. That was about nine months ago. Even though sources close to those private investigators and the Tiger IPI denied the pictures being theirs. In the wake of the murder, the family, the Tiger IPI, some friends, and loved ones of the deceased 
opined strongly that his killing had direct link with the instigation of Honorable Kennedy Japan. Adding a stronger voice to that school of thought has been Ghana's minority in parliament. In a press conference held on January 21, 2019, the minority accused Mr. Japan based on a provocative statement he had made. They insisted on his arrest and prosecution. Hours after the incidents, however, Mr. Japan left the country. Meanwhile, the Criminal Investigations Department of the Ghana Police Service, through its Director General, DCOP Mamiya Tiwa Adodankwa, intimated the proprietor of the Net2 TV station had offered to assist the police to investigate to the bottom of the matter. The President of the Republic, on receiving the news, extended his condolences to the bereaved family while expressing optimism in the police service to bring the perpetrators to book. His Excellency the President was not spared either by critics. While his government has been accused of laxity in ensuring security, he has been blamed for shielding Kennedy, thus refusing to order his arrest before the latter flew out of the country. Osei Jumo Channel is concerned about the twist of the matter. Viewing it under a parodic lens, that serious security issue has undeniably taken a political dimension. We hold that, in a consolidating democracy, stagnation of national progress is the possible after effect when partisanship takes a center stage. One of Ghana's democratic challenges has been the unnecessary politicization of all national issues. Why must crimes continue to be clad in political colors? And if the accusations are confirmable, why must the government show a crime suspect? The opposition party justified itself having reacted to the development. It is disappointing that Ghana's minority in parliament will not accept to be partly responsible for that heinous crime, like all other suspects. Was it the right time to react? Where was the minority at the time of Kennedy a Japan's instigation? A credible leadership must rather be proactive. If the executive president is to order the arrest of every criminal or crime suspect, what then will be the essence of the offices of the Inspector General of Police and the Minister for National Security? Can they not be independent? Today, it is the National Democratic Congress, NDC, alleging and accusing. Tomorrow, it is definitely the new patriotic party, NPP. Indeed, we have had enough of excessive display of partisanship since the rebirth of constitutional rule in 1992. Why cannot serious issues be dealt with beyond the parameters of partisanship? Do not destroy the beauty of democracy. Beware.